Bev. <laughs> so I remember sitting in my world geography class sophomore year, and one of the topics that we were discussing was the Arab Spring. At first I didn't think much of it, but then now seeing how it turned out to be a really big thing now. So the Syrian Civil War started as a people demonstration, but then it turned into a full-scale war with many different sides who oppose and support the government and those who want territorial gain. Uh, the International Encyclopedia of Social Science states that the United States played a major role in providing weapons and training to those who fight, who pledged to fight the Islamic State of Syria and Iraq, known as ISIS. First, I'll discuss how the Syrian Civil War became a global crisis. Next, I'll discuss how I'll introduce the main groups fighting within the war and their roles. And lastly, I'll discuss how the Syrian refugees crisis started out. <clears throat> so, in Claire Skinner immigration and migration in context, the Arab Spring started out in 2011 as peaceful demonstrations for countries like Tunisia and Egypt who wanted democratic governments. That wasn't the case in Syria. President Bashar al-Assad decided to use military force against those peaceful demonstrations. He even started using chemical weapons and thus increasing the violence in the region. The, encyclope the Encyclopedia of Social Scientists also states that the use of chemical weapons and violence caused from ISIS increased the level of danger within the area, especially those areas around Aleppo and Raqqa where demonstrations started. <clears throat> those, according to the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, over 11 million Syrians have been displaced from their homes. So, <clears throat> next I'll discuss about the major groups fighting within the war. That includes the United States, Russia, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. According to the International Encyclopedia of Social Science, Russia aids the al-Assad government while the United States backs the rebel groups. One such rebel group is known as the Free Syrian Army, which is made up entirely of those who stayed back to fight the government, now is known as the Syrian Democratic Forces. One other ethnic group that emerged from the area is known as the Kurds. William Haviland, cultural anthropologist, stated that the Kurds, although oppressed, were able to obtain a lot of the region in northern Iraq and Syria that was once held by ISIS. This shows that the Syrian Civil War has hope that the Kurds may one day have their own Kurdish state. So, another thing, the biggest topic that is discussed throughout the Syrian Civil War has been the Syrian refugee crisis in which over 11 million Syrians have been displaced. Claire Skinner's Immigration and Migration in Context discusses how these refugees moved from neighboring countries like Lebanon as well as to Germany. It also discusses how those have made a dangerous trip in overcrowded boats to the neighboring country of Turkey. Cultural anthropologist William Haviland also examines how xenophobia and economic securities, racism, ethnic tensions has also increased how these Syrian refugees' lives have changed. One such instance is how <clears throat> one such instance cultural anthropologist William Haviland has a quote from Albert Einstein that says the world is too dangerous to live in. Not by those who do evil, but by those who let it happen. So first, I discussed how the Syrian, war, Syrian Civil War started. Secondly, I discussed how, who were the main groups and their roles. And lastly, I discussed the Syrian Civil War and how it affected the people. Thank you. How long was that?